In this video, we're going to show you how to use the table view, or in iOS, it's kind of like a list view here. So we have different items, iOS, Android, Raspberry Pi, Blender. These items come from an array, and they're just strings. And we can do things like select on them and have an action be performed when that's selected. So let's take a look at how that works. Open up a new project in Xcode, single view application, go to next. I'm just going to call this tables. Make sure it's under Swift and Universal. Just going to save it any old place. And now we have our application. First thing we want to do is go into the main storyboard. And we're going to get rid of this view controller, this default view controller. So just go ahead and select it. Hit the delete key. But before you do that, notice that there's this arrow coming in from the left. That means it is our initial view controller. This is the initial view controller that's going to be shown when the application is launched. And if I uncheck this box, this is under the attributes for this view controller you see that arrow disappears. And if you re-enable it, that's the initial view controller again. So delete this. And down here in the bottom right-hand corner, we have all of our items that we can add to our storyboard. And so I want a table view controller, and that's right at the top here, or you can type it in for filter. Drag that in, it's going to create one for you. And the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that that is initial view controller is checked. So then we launch our application, it'll use this one for our initial view controller. All right, so now that we have that, let's um, go ahead and make sure that the view controller class that we have listed here is going to be assigned to this one. So if we go into this button here for the class settings, you can see it's looking for a UI table view controller type. And if we start typing in view controller, which is the class that we have initially created here, it won't autocomplete that. And the reason why is because view controller is of subclass UI view controller. So let's go ahead and change this to UI table view controller. And then that means that view controller will then inherit or subclass the UI table view controller, allowing us to override some of those functions. So once we have that, let's go ahead and save that, go back to our main storyboard, and now we can change our class view controller here. So autocomplete works, meaning that it knows that this, this class um, is a UI table view controller. So that's great. So let's go ahead and hit enter on that to complete it. And let's go over to attributes and just make sure we have everything set up. Now for our table cells, each one of these rows is going to be a particular table cell. And what it needs is a reuse identifier. And what that means is as these cells or rows are scrolled through on this table, when a, when a cell reaches the end of the table view at the bottom here and goes off screen, what it'll do is it'll take it and put it at the top off screen as well. And so as you're scrolling through, it's recycling these cells. And that way your computer doesn't need to create and instantiate new cells every time you're scrolling through, let's say a hundred rows or a thousand rows. It doesn't need to create that. It just needs to create enough rows to display on the screen and then a few more for above and below. And then all it does is just change the data that's that's shown in it. So very effective manner. But we need a reuse identifier so that we know that these cells can be reused. And if you have different types of cells, if you're if you're mixing, you know, images with text and that sort of thing, you would have different reuse identifiers with that. With the prototype cells that we have, uh, we can change this to let's say a basic style for this, and that'll allow you to have an image as part of that but let's just call this cell and make, so we need to make sure that that's there, right there. So we're good there. And um, the next thing we need to do is make sure that in our view controller class, we, let's go back to main storyboard real quick. I want to show you one thing. So since we did create this table view controller, 
it Xcode automatically hooked this up. Now, if you wanted a table view within another controller, say maybe only taking up part of the screen, and this particular one's going to take up the entire screen, then what you'd need to do is you would need to not import a table view controller, but instead a table view into that view controller, and then holding down the control key and dragging from your table view, either in the hierarchy here or from the view here, drag it to your view controller here, and then make it the data source and the delegate. And the table view is going to show each row for um, as defined in the data source. It's also going to ask the delegate certain questions. So let's dive into that, make sure those are connected, that the dots should be connected, which means that the table view is connected to that view controller for the data source and the delegate. All right, and since we inherit from the table view controller, then we automatically get that delegation and data source functionality or protocols in our, in our view controller. And again, if you're embedding a table view within a, in a regular UI view controller, then you'd have to add the delegate protocols here. So UI table view delegate and source code enable in order to enable those methods to be exposed and essentially overridden or implementing the protocol. So what does that look like? Since our UI view controller is a table view controller, what we're going to do is then implement those data functions and the delegate functions, the data source and the delegate. So we do that in, uh, well, we're first interested in one, how many sections of the table do we have? And just starting out, we're just gonna have one section. So we have to tell, or excuse me, the table is going to ask us, this class, how many sections it has. And so what we would do is override, and then if you and see, and the, the method for this one is called number of sections, and that's going to return an integer. And it's also gonna pass in the table view just in case maybe perhaps you have another table view and it's just gonna let you know which one it's actually asking for. So in this one, I'm just going to return one as a hard-coded value because I just want one section, meaning one kind of grouping of data. The next thing it needs to know and it's going to ask us is how many rows within each section? Well, we have one row and what we wanna do is tell it how many uh, how many rows in that section. So we start this off as table view, number of rows in section, and we wanna return an integer to tell the table view how many rows it should display for each particular session, section. And we only have one section, so we have this one. And what you can normally do is just, or not normally, but just for testing this out and make sure it's working, uh, let's return a hard-coded value of five. So now that we have this, it, we're gonna have essentially five rows in one section. It's going to ask us, okay, you have five rows in one section, so that's five rows total. If we had two sections, it would be five rows per two sections or 10 rows total. What is the cell that you want to display for a particular index? And for example, you know, the first one, maybe we display a piece of text yeah, and, and the example that we have in our simulator, iOS is going to be the first one. Uh, and part of the display on that one is kind of jutted up to the top there. The second index would be Android, Raspberry Pi, and then Blender. And so it's going to ask us what we should display in each one of those rows. And that's just a, another function here. And so we have a function. And that one is going to be table view cell for row at index path, and that's going to return a UI table view cell. Okay, so it hits enter on that one, so we get the autocomplete, and let's actually clean up our uh, display a little bit here. Okay, so what it's going to ask us is, we need to create a cell, we need to instantiate it, we need to set its label, uh, what it's going to display, to a particular piece of text, and then we need to return that label. So the way that we do that is we create let because we're going to instantiate this and we're not going to change it. 
and we're going to ask the table view that we just set up can you DQ one of your cells and we're actually going to use this one uh, it, and this is a little bit more robust way of doing it uh, but you can certainly use that one and that's pretty easy to use but let's just go ahead and select this one DQ a reusable cell with identifier now if you remember when I typed in that word cell capital C this is what it's going to do as the cell comes off the bottom or the top depending upon which way you're scrolling when it comes off and goes out of view it'll then put it onto the top or if it came from the top it'll put it on the bottom and it needs to know which cells it can reuse and we're only going to have one type here but this is where you do it and then for this index path we're just going to simply pass in the index pass path that was passed in via the parameter and what the index path is is essentially the index of the row and so it might be zero or it might be one or how many rows you have we have up to five so the max that this would be is four but it's not actually an index it is a multi-array index part of the index path is the section number uh, and what that means is it'll it has the value of the section so for example the first section and then what row within that section and maybe the second section and then what row within that and so we're just going to simply pass back the index path to uh, into this uh, cell in order to make sure that we're dequeuing a cell that's off of the off of the view okay so we have now instantiated the cell we have a cell object and so we're going to use that cell object and then the built-in text label and you can have default or excuse me you can have custom cells where you have images you have text, uh, you may have other types of uh, UI elements in there, and we can define those um, custom. But for right now, we're just gonna use the built-in label, and this comes back as an optional, so we need to make sure that we tell um, the compiler that it is, and then once we do that, we can pull out the text by doing dot text. And then I'm just gonna do test, okay? So once we do that, um, yeah, I think um, that's all we need for this one. Now I'm gonna make sure that compiles. Oh, okay, so huh. I told you that we re need to return the table view, but I didn't actually do it. So let's go ahead and do that now. So return cell, and now that should clean up our errors. Okay, so we built it, we're running it. Let's go here. Okay, oops, and I hit the home key by accident. So now you can see that we do indeed have five rows. Each one is test. Well, this is not very interesting, not very useful. So how do we make this custom? Well, usually you would have some kind of data source, uh, be it an array or some other kind of data structure. So let's create one that's just built into the UI table view controller, namely this view here. And I'm gonna say, let my, I'm just gonna call it a data array. And so if you remember from our example, we had iOS as the first example, Android, and these don't have to be strings. These can be other objects, and then maybe the strings are within those objects. We're just keeping it pretty simple for right now. This is Raspberry Pi. And finally, we have Blender. All right, so now that we have this actual piece of data, and hopefully this is something that's a little bit more dynamic than something that's hard-coded, but you may have a hard-coded piece of data. Now, scrolling down here, number of sections is still gonna be one. Um, I can show you what that looks like in a second if we switch that to two. Instead of a hard-coded value of five, we actually have four in this, but how do we tell the table view how many are in this array we do data array dot count and that'll return the count of how many items are in that array and that's simple so as our array grows this is automatically updated to the version and then finally instead of test we're going to use that data array again and we're going to uh, reference the index but using the index path again asking which row it is we can't just use index path we have to say 
what row within that index path are we talking about? Okay, and that's all we have to do for that once we hook up our data, hit compile, let this compile and run, switch over to our simulator. And there you go. So this one is iOS, Android, Raspberry Pi, Blender, and um, you know, let's add another one. Let's say uh, Windows, if anybody ever uses Windows Phone OS, okay? And let's also change this section to two sections. And let's command R to run this in the pilot, switch back to our simulator. And all right, and so what it did is it created two sections, namely these top five, and then the second section, these top five. We didn't, when we return the cell, see if we can show this both, when we return the cell here, we just simply used the index path dot row, but we didn't ask it which, or we didn't tell it for which section. And so if you were to handle this properly, you can do something like index path and then section and say something like if index path is equal to um, you know zero then do that now let's indent that else let's say this line of code is not equal to the data array um, but instead section two. Okay, so again, if the section is zero, it'll display data from our data array. If it's in, not in that section, so if we, we only have two, it'll be section with index of one, it'll show um, section two. And let's compile that. Okay, and so again, it's asking me, what should I display for section zero, index path row zero, and that's going to be iOS, because that is going to be at index row zero for our data array. It goes through our, our data array, and then it says, okay, what should I display for section one? Well, this is not section one, so it goes to this else clause and simply displays section two for the rest of those. So that's the basics of data, um, excuse me, for table view controllers and adding data uh, source and a delegate and those methods. And there's a whole bunch more that we can do with tables, tables and table cells. Uh, simply just type in override FUNC and then maybe just type in table view and you can scroll through all the different functionality that you can handle programmatically with table views. So hopefully you found this video useful and now you can go and create table views and rich pieces of data and the representation. Thanks.